Hello, my name is Connor Cullen. In this review, I'm going to be talking about how to take pictures of wildlife. And right now, I'm actually in Glacier National Park at Lake McDonald right now. So that's right on the west side entrance of N Glacier National Park. And the reason I'm doing a review like this in Glacier National Park is that national parks are a great place to find wildlife. Now, the first thing that I want to do in this review is talk about the equipment that you might want to use when taking pictures of wildlife. Now, first off, before I even mention this, wildlife photography is actually a very expensive, very tedious, and very and probably one of the most difficult forms of photography. The equipment alone can be very expensive to buy. First, you're going to need a very fast camera. A compact camera won't do for most um, serious professional wildlife photography work. In my personal opinion, I use the, or my personal camera, I use the Nikon D300, which shoots eight frames per second with the MBD10 attached to it, which is just fast enough to catch, capture those um, action moments with wildlife. The prime lens that I use is a Nikon 70mm f-stop 2.8. It's a very fast lens, um, and you need very fast lenses, especially in those low-light situations when wildlife tends to be more active. <clears throat> also, you want a low fa um, fast lens because you want low or large f-stops in order to get fast shutter speeds um, for when the wildlife is moving. Um, and this is pretty much the bottom line of what most um, wildlife photographers might have. Um, professional wildlife photographers actually have lenses like the Nikon, like big Nikon Super Telephoto Prime lenses, which can cost thousands upon thousands of dollars a piece. And of course, um, I'm not a pro, so I can't afford things like that. This is pretty much the best I can do. And this is pretty much the essential kit that you need in order to take um, a pretty decent pictures of wildlife or to get to really into wildlife photography. Next thing, a central piece of equipment that you might need is also a tripod. Now, it's not necessarily important, but um, in low light situations like dawn and dusk, um, it can be useful. It can also be useful for if you have a large lens like this. Holding it like this all the time can be um, can make your arm pretty sore. So having a tripod to set that on is really useful. Even a monopod works really well. And um, if you have an extremely large lens or large setup similar to this or even larger than this, it's definitely something you might want to consider. Um, the next thing I'm going to talk about in review is the settings that I've set my camera to in order to take um, good pictures of wildlife. First things first, I set my camera, of course, to continuous shooting mode, which with the MBD10 um, battery pack I can get 8 frames per second, which is pretty fast and definitely good for capturing wildlife. I also make sure that I have my autofocus mode in dynamic AF, um, which means that I can choose the um, AF point that I want, but the points around that um, point that I choose also autofocus slightly according to where the subject moves. And of course, the last thing I do is I turn my AF from um, to uh, continuous autofocus, which means that it'll be continu continuously focusing um, as the animal moves. So as long as I have my finger down on the shutter, it'll always focus um, as the animal moves closer or further away. And of course, that's really useful because that way you don't have to constantly take your finger off and push again and again to get um, a new focus. As for shutter speed and f-stop are both very important. The mode that I like to use is aperture priority mode, which is the A mode. And I like to set my f-stop usually to f-stop 4 or f-stop 8, depending on the light during the day and um, what time of day it is or what kind of, um, if whether or not I want background blur or um, background in focus. Most of the time I find myself using um, much larger f-stops like f-stop 4 because I don't see most, I see most wildlife actually during the morning or during sunset when it's usually pretty dark and that's when wildlife is most active. In fact, sunrise is probably when wildlife is most active and it's usually pretty dark around that time so you need to use fast apertures. Also, I like to use fast apertures when I want to just have the animal in focus and the background out of focus. Of course, um, during the day, like right now, it's um, about 4 o'clock in the day. It's pretty bright out, pretty sunny. It is possible to find wildlife um, if you're in the spot where wildlife is. You can definitely use larger or smaller f-stops like f-stop 8 and still get a pretty decent shutter speed. Um, and of course, if I want the background in focus as well as the animal, I'll use a small f-stop like f-stop 8. 
Of course, however, you want to keep in mind when taking pictures of wildlife, especially with longer lenses and at longer focal lengths, I try to keep my shutter speed at at least one two hundredth of a second. So anything lower than that, I usually adjust my f-stop to either go to go above that shutter speed or to match that shutter speed. Of course, I can also adjust ISO to go above that shutter speed if I have to. Of course, in the daytime, though, I try to keep my um, ISO as low as possible. Most of the time, I use ISO 200 for wildlife, and that usually, um, in most lights, keeps me above um, one two hundredth of a second, which is good enough for me. However, sometimes it does get dark enough, or it is dark enough to where I have to use maybe ISO 800 in order to accomplish that goal of getting at least one two hundredth of a second shutter speed. And white balance, what you want to set there is pretty much essentially the same as the way shutter speed works, or the way f-stop works. And what I mean by that is that it really depends on what time of day it is, whether it's cloudy or sunny. Um, I like most of my pictures of wildlife to be warmer than the camera would um, choose on auto mode. So I usually set my camera to cloudy mode to get warmer colors. Of course, when it is sunny out, I use the sunny mode and I tend to um, make those pictures in sunny mode a little bit warmer as well by adjusting it slightly up. Finally, um, you can use either mode, RAW or JPEG. It really doesn't matter. It depends on whether you like post-processing after you take the picture or whether or not you just like taking the picture and being done with it. I personally like to use JPEG because I'm not much of a post-processor kind of person. So what I do when I use JPEG is I set my um, picture mode to vivid and I have the saturation a little up. I either keep it in the center where it is on the D300 or I put it one up. I don't need saturation to be too high or it looks a little unrealistic. Contrast, once again, it depends on what type of day it is. If it's pretty cloudy and shady, the contrast, I set it up a little bit higher, but not all the way up, not too high. And if it's actually really sunny out, you want to use a lot lower contrast. In fact, with the Nikon D300 and most other Nikon um, digital SLRs, it has a setting called active delighting. And when it comes to wildlife, if it's really sunny out like it is right now, um, I definitely turn on the active delighting to either normal, high, or low, depending on how much harsh sunlight there is. And that's very useful, of course, when it, when it comes to really harsh sunlight.